And, um, you know, I was good at keeping promises to myself, not so good at keeping the promises I'd made to my wife. But so a year later when I did it again, I told her. How did you tell her? Did you call her up? Did you I go? called her actually from a convention. The porn industry has conventions all over the world. And I was at one and I called her and I says, you know, I'm really not here um, for golf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually at a porn convention. And I told her what I'd been doing. What'd she do? What'd she say? How'd she react? Um, she based, well, when I got home from that convention, I was sleeping on the floor of my office and never stepped foot into my house again. So yeah. that's kind of how she reacted. I think that gives you a pretty good idea. Okay. Um, she did give me a chance to, um, if I'd go into counseling and, and stuff like that, that, uh, you know, she'd, she'd take me back. But I, di I just didn't want to at that point. I was still hatred, filled, filled with hatred um, towards Christianity because of the the way that I was raised that like this was just the best way of doing the exact opposite and plus you know the first month I didn't have to hide it anymore I made fifty thousand three hundred and fifty dollars so I mean it's like I'm not going back how did your p parents react did they know about this or did they think you were at a golf convention to yeah well um, yeah my dad was a pastor as I said my mom didn't like it my dad um, was is stubborn like me so um a member of his congregation did me a big favor right at the beginning when everyone found out and sent him this letter like how can your son how can you let your son do this and so that got him mad he's like let my son do what it was your husband showing him pictures of you that i think put the idea in his head to begin with because that particular person I told my dad had really when I was 18 was constantly showing me images of okay. his wife so so this particular person was not the right one that to, to talk so my dad um, wasn't so uh, against me he was kind of it's us against the world because you people were attacking him for my decision those people that you would consider to be hypocrites at your dad's church yeah did you meet them while you were oh i i absolutely loved meeting people from my dad's church <laughs> i loved it okay lead us through that conversation because you're going to have that catch-up conversation you know when you haven't <laughs> seen someone for a while it's like what have you guys been doing what are you doing oh, well i'm you know doing blah 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 and i'd be like well i'm shooting porn and and they'd be laughing at first, and I'd be like, "No, serious, I'm I'm shooting porn." Yeah. And and then they and then they'd like start to. I knew that they were going to let me have it. They're yeah. starting to just like get angry inside, and I know that they're about to just unleash on me. And I'd say, "Wait, I know you have something to say, but before you do, I want to ask you a question. Um, have you ever looked at this stuff? Because the law of supply and demand says that without people like you creating the demand, I couldn't be making money producing this supply. So thank you for that. Yeah. Now, what was it that you were wanting to say to me? <laughs> and that would usually end the conversation. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Because really, 95% of Christians, when they can remain anonymous in the surveys that we've done in the last five years, admit that it's sometime that they at least use it yeah. um, occasionally. Yeah. All right. Okay. So you, you broke up with your wife. You were sleeping on the floor of your office. Are things escalating? Is your career kind of moving up, if you want to look at it that yeah, way? Yeah, because I was a coward and I couldn't stay alone. So I quickly found Belinda. So this is Belinda. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and and she obviously knew what you were doing. How do you start that conversation? Get a. I I said, um, Belinda, would you like to model What do you me? do? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just, uh, I, she was one of the people that I was asking if she wanted to work for me. And and, oh, yeah. um, and then I started getting feelings for her, so I didn't let her work for me, but I let her, I trained her how to shoot. Okay. And um, So you were like in a, what, an apartment doing this? Or your no, we, were, we had a pretty nice house in oh, a yeah. really nice area of town. And we'd have people come over and, and they'd start painting themselves into the picture of our life because we had a pretty good life. Yeah. And I'd have her sitting about as far away from me as, as you are working yep. on her computer while I'm interviewing a girl. And that way it makes the girl feel comfortable. And then I'd, you know, I'd just basically walk them through what I did. And mm -hmm. I'd say, now, why don't you just let Belinda shoot a few shots of you? You're not going to sign anything. We're not going to use it because you're not signing a release. I just want you to see what it's like. Okay. I'm going to walk out of the room. And just be pretty much, you know. And, but before that, before that, I have to tell you, we would try to tell them that this isn't for them. And you would try and tell the girls you were shooting this wasn't for them? Right, because that's reverse psychology. What you tell oh, a college okay. student that they can't have, they're going to say, oh, yes, I can. Is that true? I yeah, know. I mean, yeah. tell me, guys. When <laughs> someone tells you you can't have something, that's what you want. So, I mean, don't be stupid is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Don't fall. I mean, because this was a script that I ran over okay. and over again. I mean, even when I'm wanting to make a girl feel special and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I've never been affected this way. Look, you're making my hands shake. Well, I said that hundreds of times. Yeah. 
You know, I see girls every day, and there's something special about you. You're making my hands shake. Yeah. I can't even hold the camera still, and I can still make my hands shake. Yeah. <laughs> because I mean, it's 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 fake. Everything about the business is fake. I, I want to. But but really, I mean, devil's advocate question. This girl could be making however much money at Starbucks. Yeah, two hundred. And she's making a heck of a lot more money for you. Right. She's consenting to it. Absolutely. No, I imagine no one's forcing anything on her. So what's the big deal? The big deal is. Long after that 500 a day is spent on rent or whatever you want to spend it on, when you're a grandmother, that stuff still remains, and your kids are still going to see it. When you have completed your degree, if the company that you're going to work for has a morality clause, which many do, your degree is worthless. Um, I, I saw girls lose jobs at places like Hewlett Packard. They'd get kicked out of police academies They'd, because that the work that they did for me violates morality clauses. Mm -hmm. and. You know, you don't hear in the porn credits about the girls who are curled up in a ball in the corner in fetal position sucking their thumbs because their mind's so blown by what they just did to themselves that they don't know how to handle it. But I saw that all the time. You know, they, they say porn's glamorous, but it's just not. I mean, you don't hear about the surgeries that are required to repair the damages done to people's bodies. You know, and you don't hear about the fact that the average girl is going to be in the business for two years if she wants to be full time. If she doesn't quit sooner, yeah. she's only going to make it about two years before nobody wants to hire her anymore because we need new faces. Okay. So for two years of your life, you throw away the rest of it. You get to work at Home Depot or something. Do they even have Home Depot yeah, in Canada? So. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, Home Depot. And so is this what you experienced with the girls? Like, did many of them write to you and let you know that this was taking place, that they got kicked out of? Yeah, I mean, I could read a letter to you if you want. Um, you got a letter from? This girl actually emailed me um, after I got out of the business. And it's been, um, and all she did was softcore porn, which means that she posed by herself. For photos, this, didn't is, even do this is before Playboy. Before you got no, I was doing Playboy then. It's just that I, I mean, I lead them down a path. You don't, you don't start everybody out with okay. Playboy. And so she just did some soft core photos, and she writes me and she says, "Hey, Donnie, I have a huge problem. I'm getting married in a month, and my fiance found my pictures on the internet. He's beside himself. He's hurt and shocked. And being that we're supposed to tie the knot in less than a month, I'm freaking suicidal, freaking sick over this, throwing up, cannot sleep at all." I never thought in a million years that would ever happen. How long do those pictures circulate? I am seriously pissed. I know I did those pics, and yeah, it's my fault, but I want to get them off the internet. Is there any way possible to do that ASAP? I will pay you money. I'll pay it all back, whatever it takes. This will and is ruining my life. I'm fearful that his friends are going to see these and torture him about it, or the people I work with in the military now who are all men. I'm absolutely sick over this. I can't eat or sleep, and I honestly don't know what to do. I swear to you, I never thought this would happen. I mean, there are a million girls on the frickin' internet. Why me? And because you're supposed to be a changed man, please, I need to know that you understand my situation and find it in your heart to help me. This is destroying me. I know I'm 100% responsible for taking the pictures. It's my fault. But it was a long time ago. I was single and I needed the money. Isn't there anything you can do to please help me now? This was like two or three years ago. Why are my pics still on the damn internet? My military career and soon to be marriage, if he still will, is writing on this. Don't my pictures expire after a certain time and you put new ones up or sell the new ones to companies and flesh out old girls? I think you can read the desperation in this email. I'm completely desperate again at this point, Donnie, and I need your help. Can you help me? Please. I need everything removed. What can we do? I'll pay you money. Anything. Please. Say you can help me. Please. What did you write back? I was just truthful with her. I can't do anything for you. Because if you think that you are unique, it's wrong. I mean, the porn companies get these letters all the time. Yeah. If they pull down the content of every person who regrets what they did, there'd be nothing left to sell. You know, I, I, I have a friend who sometimes speaks with me. She used to be a porn star, and if I named her name, people would probably know who she was. But, um, you know, she says, usually after I read that letter to people, she says, what he's saying is true. Yeah. He's like, when I'm on a porn set and I'm doing a scene, now she did hardcore porn, she goes, you know, I might be almost in tears because I'm so dry that yeah. it's so painful mm -hmm. that I want to scream, but instead I have to moan because if I don't, we have to start over again tomorrow and I don't get paid until we're done. So, I mean, it's like we, we see this fantasy on the screen, but the reality is not the same. And what happens is as a producer, you either get more 
in touch with women and how they feel about things, or you start to hate them. That's what I was going to ask. Like, how you're obviously, uh, you how do you remain insensitive to these kind of pleas? You said yourself that you were seeing the lights go out in people's eyes. Yeah. How do you, how do you just if you think it's wrong, how do you how did you justify it? Um, at the time, I would just basically talk to Belinda, and she'd be like, "Yeah, and." And so we'll, let's just keep going on. I mean, we're making a lot of money. We're making how much money are you making? We're making more than half a million dollars a year, and we only work in two weeks a month because we're lazy and we want to take time off to spend it. So, so I mean, we were making good money. So it's kind of hard to give that up. And plus, in the back of my spirit is all this hatred toward the church. And I really can't. I mean, it might not make sense to people that have never been through that, but I liked to do what I thought was totally against what all this BS I was taught growing up would, would tell me that I should do, you know, in these situations. So, so, you know, I would, that's what really motivated me was the hatred. Okay. And then I had Belinda to talk to. And, um, we just still keep doing it. But, you know, when you're on vacation and you're getting calls begging girls, you know, from girls begging you to take down their content because it's ruining their relationships with their father. And, and you know, you got this girl who says, you know, I passed out at a party last night and guys figured since I'm a porn star, they might as well take what they want. And, you know, and, and she ends up pregnant and has no idea who the father is because she was passed out. I mean, we were paying yeah. her 10 grand a month at the time because we made a side of her. Yeah. And so she's living this party life because she started at age 18 and, and she doesn't know how to handle the money that she's making and, and, and she's just partying it away and, and you know, she's no idea. Okay. She's a basket case, you know, now. And, and, and it's, it's part, it's my, you know what, she is a consenting adult making consenting adult decisions. However, I knew better. I could see down the road. And, and that's part of the reason why I tell people stuff is it's like, you need to know better. You need to know what you're supporting because it's easy to hate me when I tell you all these stories. But the truth is, without people out there watching it, people aren't going to make money in it. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine someone saying, look, these are just worst case situations, worst case scenarios. Surely, if you're honest with us, you met women who just maybe enjoyed doing it. They had made good money and they were well rounded, rounded right? Well, no. Well, that's absolutely true that a lot of people think that, um, and and it is true that some say that, but um, they don't usually say that long term. Uh, former porn star Shelley Lubin has pointed out that when someone watches porn, um, they are watching. Um, what did she say? Mentally ill and physically diseased people having sex. Now, is that? Not always, okay. But they, I think that it's it is the case in in many instances because most people start off that I recruited as students like you sitting in an audience, and um, you come in and you think this is going to be great, and it kind of is at first. It's yeah. it's exciting because you're making money. Yeah. Until people that you know start seeing it, until a boyfriend won't date you because I mean I had a kid at Yale stand up and he'd say you know what's so wrong with it. You know, what is so wrong with it? I says, can I film your girlfriend then tonight with me? I mean, I'll, you know, I could probably pay her a lot. Of course not. I was like, well, would you want to, you know, date a person that's been with, on, you know, a 50-person gangbang? <laughs> Just be honest here. Yeah. No. Well, well, why not? If you wouldn't want to do that, if you're saying that's wrong with it, why wouldn't you want? Because deep inside you, you know that there is something wrong with it. Okay. How did you get into Playboy? Like, how did... Uh... Like, I can imagine that's like hitting the jackpot for a porn producer, isn't it? <laughs> like, do you get discovered or do you well, apply? Um, what happens? Playboy had nominated Chico State as a party school, and I, that's where I shot. Okay. And so um, one of their vice presidents um, saw some of the work I did, and he actually just called me one day, and he says, the girls you recruit would be pro really perfect for the site that we have.